Square left, don't cut. Oh, Jesus. Nothing broken. I disagree. Oh! Fellow rally fans, we don't really have many games to choose from at the moment, do we? Of course we have the Dirt series, which is sort of like a light rally game thing. Then of course we have the Dirt Rally series, which is different and a bit more simmy. And to be honest, still one of my favorite rally titles just to jump into and f about it. We have of course Richard Burns Rally, which has been modified so much now that I have actually forgotten what the original game looks like, but uh, still somehow one of the most realistic titles out there. And then we have the WRC series of games by Killer Time. Uh, now truthfully, I've actually kind of been a fan of the WRC games. I've had quite a lot of fun in them. They're always quite decent to drive, but to say that they are inconsistent would be probably the biggest understatement of this video. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had the release of the most recent iteration of the WRC franchise, the WRC Generations game, which is basically the last few games just squeezed together. And my last couple of streams have actually been in WRC Generations with uh, <laughs> varying levels of success. I, uh, I, uh, I, I crash a fair bit. And again, I find myself enjoying the driving in the game, but there is a lot of other stuff, and I mean a lot of other stuff in this game that is either broken, doesn't work properly, or just flat out missing. Now, I'm not sure if this video is going to count as a review or not, but I'm going to just chat away for a bit and see where I end up. So anyone, first of all, who's familiar with the last two WRC games is going to see a lot of stuff that is very, very similar in WRC generations. Even the freakishly long arms and hands are still here. In fact, I think it's fair to say that since WRC 8, there's not really been a new game. It's just been an evolution of the last game. And maybe evolution is too strong a word. Maybe like update for the last game. Of course, in the new WRC generations, we have new cars. We have uh, the hybrid, the Rally 1 cars, which actually drive really well, and we have a return of some of the Rally 2 cars as well. So there's a decent range of cars to choose from, but nothing especially different from what we've had in the last couple of years. And let's talk about the WRC 1 cars for a second. Because that, that's going to be the main focus for a lot of people in this game. These are the, the hybrid monsters that we have today in WRC, and they are done fairly well. They drive okay. You know, they, they, they're, they're quite fun to get into, they're quite fun to try and drive to the ragged edge, but my god, you have to do a lot to, to get there. Let's start with throttle input. Okay, now you guys might not have noticed this if you're driving on a gamepad or if you're particularly heavy-footed <laughs> in sim, but below 80% throttle, the car does nothing. In fact, I'm going to boot up the game and show you what I mean. Right, so we're going to put it in gear. Watch my throttle input. This is half throttle. Still going, still going, still going, still going. This is now 70% throttle. Still going, still going, still going, still going. And now, finally the car moves forward. Yeah, you're probably wondering why the hell I showed you that, but because that has massive ramifications for how you drive the cars in this game. Now, these cars have hybrid as well, and the hybrid recharges automatically over the stage and is deployed automatically, something else that isn't quite realistic, I suppose, but also somewhat frustrating to drive with, which means coming out of slow corners, as my good friend Stephen J. Bailey says, it's just a bit of a gamble whether you can get out or not, because you have to put in more than 80% throttle input anyway. And if the hybrid starts up, you've got tons of horsepower coming out of the corner so you just wheel spin and you have no control over that if you come off throttle you just stop and the car reacts in a really weird way and speaking of reacting in a really weird way let's talk about handbrake as well handbrake's an essential part of uh of rallying you know getting the car around tight corners massive oversteer moments feeling like a fucking god in wrc 10 it feels extremely odd it's not just that it locks the rear wheels it feels like some invisible force pushes you around at the rear to the point where you can't really use the handbrake um, without spinning. And if you do, it has to be like the lightest of touches. You can't hold it into a corner. You can't do any of that. And you end up having quite a lot of moments where the car is just this floundering mess trying to go into any sort of hairpin. Now, I've not driven a rally car in real life. Not really, anyway. Um, but I have gone drifting in real life. And although my <laughs> my <laughs> Supra isn't quite a, uh, a rally car, I feel like the handbrake isn't isn't done properly it's a step backwards from whatever was there last year and this next point is a bit of a shame because just like the dirt rally games tarmac now feels like it's just 
gravel, but with the grip turned up a bit, which you feel because you float around on the surface of the tarmac. You never feel like you're biting in with the tire at all. It just feels like you're just like, ah, just sailing around on the tarmac. And it's such an odd sensation that takes you out of that immersive experience. And it's a shame because previous WRC games actually did tarmac better than dirt, but for some reason now they're not doing that. They've made it worse. I just don't know what the thinking is here. So another big thing is that the default setups for a lot of these cars are just awful. Like, everything is full soft on every setting possible, which means the cars just wallow and randomly flip over sometimes because of just how, how soft they are, roll about like they're on a an ocean. And you could say, well, you know, Jimmy, that's up to the, the players to tuning a good setup. But I disagree with that. A good baseline setup should be like 85% of the way there. It shouldn't be... 0% because then when you get in as a driver as a player you have no idea what's wrong with the car because it feels so bad that it feels like there's no possible way back to a good setup it's such an oversight so either the default setups have just have not been tested or they've purposely gone for the worst setup possible both of those things make zero sense to me. To top it off, Rally 1 cars have center diffs in game. They're actually banned in real life competition, but they are still tunable and they still do do things, which makes you think they've just been copy and pasted with some adjustments from last year's WRC cars. And to add to that, all two wheel drive cars in games both have front and rear differentials and they both do things to how the car handles. What is going on? So I could drive a rear-wheel drive car and adjust the front differential, which it would not have in real life because it's rear-wheel drive, and I could make the car faster, which again makes you think that all cars are inherently four-wheel drive, but just tuned to make them have different characteristics to make them seem like they're two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And whilst not all cars have six gears in this game, some do, but you can't adjust sixth gear in any of the setup menus because it's not listed there. Only five gears are listed in the setup menu, even if your car has six. Now there are wet tires in this game for the wet tarmac rallies but they are pretty much pointless because the soft and hard tarmac tires are actually quicker in the wet so there's just no point in them existing why why even bother using them these cars don't have any anti-lag sounds on the external cameras they sound a bit odd inside and some of the other rally 2 cars and cars that maybe don't get as much attention just flat out broken i mean the lancia delta group a car has no noise from the exterior at all from what i can tell the Subaru sounds like a couple of different engines mixed together. These are the actually correct engines. And the Fabia R2 car, if you buzz it off the limiter, it gets exponentially louder for no particular reason that I can explain to you. And these might seem like little things, but in a game that has basically been the same game for the last few years, like they are kind of unforgivable, especially that that Fabia. I mean, that, that makes driving the car annoying. Because every time you're going quick, you get this buzz in your ear, like your your brain's about to fetch and explode. What that noise? There aren't many cars that sound good in WRC generations, and I know that these modern rally cars don't exactly make the best sound in the world. But there's no realism to it. It's all so synthetic, and it's just such a shame because that's such a big part of any driving game for me personally. Having the car sound like the thing it's meant to sound like. Graphically, the game looks. Okay, the cars are better than last year, that's for sure. There was some weirdness in some of the old games where the stages were so dark you required headlights for every stage because of how the onboard camera worked. That was very odd. That luckily isn't around anymore. And when you're in full swing in a stage with the HUD off and the co-driver just shouting in your ear, you can feel like you're there for a moment. You know, there, there is still a level of immersion in this game. So if you want to play on your own against AI, on 150%, which is the hardest AI level, you are going to have a very mixed experience. They are either fast to the point of being unrealistic or slow to the point of being unrealistic. So basically, any offline challenge is going to be pretty much impossible for a full season. And on that, in season mode, there's no difficulty adjustment allowed between different seasons. So whereas in games like in uh, Formula 1 2022, you can adjust the slider as you go for each circuit. If the AI may be a bit faster, a bit slow, you can at least adjust the slider to have a better experience. You can't do that in this game. So you're stuck with the thing you choose at, at the start. On that, there's still no option to do a single player custom season or championship, which means if you want to do a championship or a season in a WRC1 car, like a, one of the fast hybrids, you can't. You have to unlock it, either going playing through an entire season mode or playing through a career mode to do that, which, you know, is going to be at least probably five, six hours of your time before you can drive one of these cars actually on your own, outside of just solo stages, which are not against any AI.
Now, we ran some club events the other day in WRC Generations, which really showed me a couple of things that were wrong with the online. The first thing for me is that when you're trying to set up an event, you have to set up an event to start in a certain amount of time in the future. And what I mean by that is you can choose some increments, like, hey, I want this event to start five minutes in the future or an hour in the future but the increments are so weird and different that it's really hard to accurately plan an event for example you can either have your event start for an hour in the future or four hours in the future there's nothing in between that why i mean i, I assume you guys have access to clocks right and different time zones why can't we just set that as i want my thing to go live at 8 p.m on this time zone it seems so easy but obviously beyond uh, the capabilities of this game and on that during a club event online you cannot actually check the standings of the event until you finish the rally so you can check your individual stage times which is fine but you can't actually check the overall standings at any point until you're completely done and dusted and even then the times are sometimes added up incorrectly so you have people who have done three minute rallies for what should be a 50 minute rally either that or people are cheating either you know that's still going to be a hole somewhere in fact leaderboards are so broken in the club section that when you go to the main menu some of them just don't display properly at all so yeah you I mean you're probably just seeing a theme of of all of this it's just a lot of things are wrong with the game it's another example of a game that could have spent probably another few months being developed before it came out and i understand that there are deadlines to me and marketing quotas to fill but this just it's just not good enough especially for a game which is just a recycled version of wrc 10 which is a recycled version of wrc 9 which is a recycled version of wrc 8 and so on and so on and so forth whilst there have been flashes of greatness for this game you know I, again i still actually enjoy driving it despite all of this i still have fun driving the car i find it so hard to be able to actually recommend this game to anybody because honestly Killerton, by now you've had a good chance to really cement this formula but time and time again you've just seemingly taken the easy way out or not gone down the road of actual development rather trying to make it look like you've put some new stuff in the game but in reality it's just a polished version of what you've had previously which also didn't quite work well i think one of the big concerns is a lot of these problems have been reported in previous titles yet here they are again in the next release and this one is everywhere it's on playstation xbox on pc as well and by the way all the menus and everything feels like it's very much designed for console it's hard to navigate on on a on a keyboard it's just simply not good enough and i'm going to get round now to, to the title of this video and saying that i cannot recommend this game to you if you're a massive wrc fan and you have wrc 10 and you want a couple more stages then yeah i guess if you don't mind spending the money there is a bit more here but if you're someone maybe who's new to rally games, don't bother. Don't bother. Go get Dirt Rally 2.0. Go download Richard Burns Rally. Hell, even older WRC games probably do a better job than this one does. I just don't... I feel like it is insulting to give these guys your money for the massive list of negatives that come with this game. And I hate saying that. I hate saying stuff like that because I want every game to succeed. Every sim title, every sim light title, which is what you could probably classify WRC generations as. I want it, I want them all to do well because the more games we get, the better, right? And the, the more people get to work in this industry and the better experience for all of us. But this cannot be the standard. It can't be this way. But anyway, guys, I know that was quite a talky video, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And um, it's not, as I say, I don't like making negative videos that often because I want people, I want things to do well. But I also want you guys to be informed, especially when out there spending your own money, because, you know, this is meant to be a hobby after all. And it's always the worst thing in the world when you go spend money on your hobby and you find yourself getting kind of shortchanged. If you found the video informative in any way, uh, feel free to hit that like button. Or if you maybe want to discuss some of the points I've made, comment down below i'm going to be watching the comments on this video i'm quite interested to hear your opinions too and if you want to see more stuff like this then feel free to subscribe hit that bell icon and you'll be notified of future videos i massive thank you to bailey for helping me out of this it's always good to have someone with a bigger brain than you <laughs> to help out with these longer form videos take care have an awesome day see you next time